right now they have to be fed basically about every three to four hours around the clock, which means, yes, that's in the middle of the night waking up. Um, so it's usually, oh, my so we already have um, kitten milk replacement already pre-made. They are hungry as you see, so a lot of times we just have them lay as they normally would, like um, to suckle off mom. Then once they get the nipple in, they sit there and usually eat quite well. Just put the bottle up a little bit more. We have any issues? Then I usually just let them eat basically as much as they want. When they are done, um, at this age, they also can't go to the bathroom on their own. So you have to stimulate them to go potty and to poop. Um, they don't necessarily go poop after every meal, but they do go potty. Um, they're actually around three weeks of age. They start to go a little bit on their own now. Um, but like I said, they, they physically can't, so you have to kind of help them. Normally, mom would groom them and lick them, and that's how um, they would be stimulated by mom. So in order to replace mom, we have to, basically I just use gauze to stimulate. <laughs> You're being difficult, little boy. <laughs> yeah, but all four of these look identical. Uh, their current names are Eeny, Meeny, Miny, and Mo. <laughs> She's a girl, all the other ones are boys. You see, I know, the bottle was full, so they do eat a fair amount, but they're not being stubborn. Also, every just because I know that one's being difficult. I've been fostering these. Tristan's done other bottle babies, but every litter eats slightly different. So she's actually not used to these kittens. So that's why, you know, sometimes just jumping in and helping somebody out can be a little difficult. So like I said, to stimulate to go potty, I usually just use something nice and soft. This is real soft gauze. And then I just hold their tail up and basically mom would normally lick them and groom them. Obviously, I'm not going to lick and groom them, so you basically just pretend, you know, use the gauze as if it was mom licking, and you can see, it's going potty. And like I said, I don't worry, you know, as, you know, they don't always go poop after every single meal. Um, usually you can tell if they're going to go or not. But like I said, they do go potty, so literally every time that they get fed, they have to be stimulated as well. And like I said, it can be a little bit of hard work because it's depending how old they are every four hours around the clock, but it's for a good cause because how can you say no to that little itty bitty cute face? Are they almost always hungry and take the bottle well? Yeah. Okay. If I gave him the bottle, or her, uh, the bottle again, she'd probably start suffering again. They will almost always say, it's just a matter of when they're real hungry, they will suckle on it for a long period of time. If I gave it back to her now, she'd suckle a little bit and be like, oh yeah, no, I'm full. And then so they wouldn't, they wouldn't eat too much? They just stop? Usually not, yeah. Okay. I've never had that issue. Of course, you never want to just go ahead and give them as much as they want when they're babies. But, right, um, right. So like I said, I give them as much as they want this meal. You know, like each meal, you know, sort of like, all right, take as much as you want, and then kind of use my judgment. Like, I've seen she, she ate a large amount. If she had only eaten a little bit, then after I stimulated, I'd hear, do you want some more? You know, okay. offer her more. Does but she ate a large amount, so definitely she's she's good for another three to four hours. So, do you make that up ahead and keep yes. it in the refrigerator, or does yep, it need I, to be um, warm? I use the um, KMR powder, and so I basically mix it up as I need it. Okay. Um, so, I see that bottle. There's still some left, so it'll go in the fridge, and then it'll be warmed for the next meat, for the next feeding, and then usually at that point in time it's thrown out, um, or they usually eat it all by then. Okay. So I just make up sort of a little bit at a time. Um, I do once the can of powder is open, I keep it in the fridge because it lasts longer. It, you, it has to be kept refrigerated once it's open, okay. or you can even keep it in the freezer, and because in the fridge it's open every for a week. Once open in the freezer, it's good for like uh, three months. Oh. So. Obviously, they're going to go through plenty of cans of KMR, but if I know I'm not going to get through it all before they're weaned, I would put it in the freezer. So the KMR is specifically for kittens? Yep. it stands for kitten milk replacement. So it's because um, cats 
and dogs, for that matter, are actually lactose intolerant. Oh. So giving them milk from a cow, um, okay. they would get diarrhea and you know, okay. but they would get sick and just have the nutrients they need. So it's okay. as close to what mama would give them as what we as men can make. As okay. Can. Yeah, good to know. Yeah, so now they're, she's cold, so now she's nice and quiet. Definitely at first, you know, when I first bring them out, they're moving around a lot, but once they're nice and full, they calm down. Good girl. And then um, in the rescue, we keep them till they are at least eight weeks of age. That way, then they have time for proper socialization with their litter mates, or if they do have a mom, you know, with mom, but definitely with their litter mates. Um, so they definitely stay till at least eight weeks of age. Um, like I said, that's for proper socialization for them, and that way, then we can get their vaccine started and everything else with them. Do you ever have a situation where they won't take the bottle? Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, that does happen, especially when we first get them, um, especially if they were used to mom's milk, um, because this milk tastes different than mom's. Okay. The nipple on the bottle is different than what's on mom's. So it feels, it tastes different to them. So sometimes at first it can be a little difficult for them to figure out that it is food and it is safe. Um, so it's sometimes a lot of patience. Other times I will do two feedings, obviously, you know, to get, they need to get food and aren't getting any. Right. Um, then we do two feeding, which most of them tolerate very well. We just pass a real small tube down their throat and into their belly and just do a little bit of, um, you know, the milk at a time. So once they know that that's food, they're, yeah, they get once, better at yeah, it? Yeah, once they okay. realize that, oh, this is, this is food, oh, okay. That, all right, this is what's, you know, what I need to eat to survive, then usually okay. they take take it on. Um, yeah. Like I said, the, usually I've only had to two feet if they've been sick, or like I said, if they were with mom and suddenly we have them, you know, because something happened to mom that she is no longer able to care for them, right. then sometimes it can take, you know, a day or two before they realize, oh, okay, this is, this is my, my new mom. Do you think they imprint on you? No. Because of this? No. Okay. Um, I mean, they definitely, um, like at my house when I let them out, a lot of times they come to me more than anyone else, but that's because I'm the one that has the food. Um, but you could come to my house right now, if I let them out, they climb all over your lap, all over my lap. Okay. Um, I have friends that have taken some of my bottle babies, and, you know, even a week after they take them, I go to check in on them, you know, when they're 10 weeks old or whatever, and they act like they don't even know. So, okay. No, they, they love me right now because I am their food source. Okay. <laughs> Once they can start eating on their own, um, they forget that I was their food source, and they just love attention and food. Okay. You had a question? I think it was keeping them warm. Okay. Um, right now, they're actually, since it's so warm outside and in here, I don't have anything in there. But I have a heating pad that I normally keep in the cage, and I have it so the cord basically comes out the door so I can fully keep it enclosed. Okay. Then, of course, I wrap it up in towel or blanket. Okay. It then depends how thick the towel or blanket is. It depends what setting I keep it on, but it's definitely one of the, you know, old-fashioned that doesn't have the auto shut off. Right. So that way then it stays on at all times. And then, um, like I said, the towels and blankets I normally use, I I kind of know, okay, this one's thicker, I have to keep it on high, or this one's thin, keep it on low, but definitely at first, you know, put it on and just, I regularly keep checking to make sure it's a good temperature, not too hot or not too cold for them. Are you leaving a space for them to crawl away if it gets too hot? But I've heard that before. I don't because I just make sure, because I keep it, 99% keep it. of the time it's on low. So it's, you know, just a little bit of heat that, you know, basically I, I figure if I can, you know, if I would be comfortable laying on it without moving off, you know, then it's fine. Um, definitely if I'm putting something in there that's going to be really warm, then yes, I definitely make sure it's somewhere that you crawl off. Um, but for the most part, especially when they're really itty bitty, like only one or two weeks old, their eyes aren't open yet, they can't see, they can't hear. A lot of times they would climb off of the heat source and not figure out how to get back so then they would get too cold. So I find it's best just to keep a heat source everywhere in the cage. You just have to be very careful that it's not too hot for them. How do you know if they're too cold? Do you know their ears or? I mean, the only exact way it would be to take a temperature. Because, um, you know, just like us, there's plenty of times my fingers and my nose are cold, but the rest of me is warm. So definitely, you know, if they're cold, you know, they'll, they'll shiver, which, of course, they can do if they're scared or nervous or anything as well. Um, definitely shivering if they just feel cold to the touch. 
um, but the only accurate way is to do a rectal puncture. And then cats should be between 100 and 102.5. Kittens as you know, 98.5, you know, like a little bit cooler is still okay. Um, but ideally, you know, right around 99 to 101 is the ideal temperature that they should be. Yep. Because I am ready for a good combat. <laughs>